Hi, I'm Max Walker-Williams, and today we are having a look at the Gartner crypto chart. I find it really, really interesting. I came across it in a book, and I thought, while we're entering this crypto winter, and there is riots in the streets, and horses running down the street, dragging people along, and Bitcoin's crashing, and all of these things are crashing, I thought, why don't we just bring it inside, ignore the outside, bring down the shutters, close the curtains, and let's just talk about something that I found really, really interesting, and we'll just ignore the world outside for a second. So how did this come about? It's something I do find genuinely interesting, uh, and it's regardless of, of what crypto project you're from, this, can, this chart applies to sort of the technology as a whole. So I'm a big fan of Hedera Hashgraph, as you probably know, and uh, one of their governing council members is the London School of Economics and Political Sciences. And I had the great, great honor of meeting and interviewing uh, Carsten Sorison, who is the professor of mathematics down at LSE. And that video, by the way, is gonna be on the channel very, very shortly. And if you haven't already, I strongly suggest you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and you'll be notified when your video is ready to watch. And it's an interview with Dr. Sorison, and it's really, really good. Uh, he's, he's a massively interesting guy, uh, just generally in life, not just about uh, crypto, but about crypto too. Anyway, we got on like a house on fire. Uh, in fact, I'm going to see him in a couple of weeks uh, and I'll be filming that and, and sharing that on Twitter. So if you're not following me over there, have a look in the link below at M. Walker Williams and uh, we'll go down together. You can come down with me and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll film everything behind the scenes of me meeting. I'm doing a talk in the Shard, if you can believe that. So I'm going to be doing a talk in the Shard for Dr. Sorison and uh, uh, Professor Sorison, sorry. And um, uh, yeah, so I'll be filming that. So definitely come along for the, for the trip. Um, so he recommended a couple of books for me to read, and one of them is Blockchain Foundations by a fantastic lady in America called uh, Mary Lassity. And Mary wrote this book, and no joke, is about that thick, and I cannot, it's a page turner, it's fantastic. She explains things really, really well, and it's basically about the whole history of, of blockchain from start to finish, from DigiCash right through to the future. So really interesting book, and I'm really grateful for the, review, uh, for the recommendation. I'll probably do a review of the book. I've done a couple of review videos. I'll put links in the description below of other books, and I think I'll probably be doing a, a review of this book because it is a big old beast, and a lot of people are busy. So I'll read it for you, and I'll just do a review on it if that's uh, something you'd be interested in. Um, okay, so in the book, there is this chart. Uh, I haven't even finished the book yet, but I had to do this video because I thought it'd be interesting, as I say. So the Gartner. So what is, so what is the Gartner? Well, Gartner is a global uh, company. Um, so Gartner are a global company that advise other global companies on trends, insights, investment advice, etc. They are worth $4 billion, uh, over $4 billion, which is $4,000 million themselves. They're a member of the S&P 500, so says their website, link in the description below. They operate in over 100 countries, and they have 423,000 followers on Twitter. Uh, and if, you want, if you're over on Twitter, have a look. It's Gartner, G-A-R-T-N-E-R, -E underscore, Inc. Gartner, Inc. Gartner, underscore, Inc. Have a look for yourself. And they basically, they're paid by companies to give them advice, look into things. So they're always looking at trends and what's going to be happening next on a micro, which means very, very small, and macro, which means very, very big scale. And they invented this chart. So this chart is basically how things are going to, what's happened previously, what's happening right now, and what's going to happen next in the crypto space. And I actually created a video a little bit like this um, from, from sort of like my gut feel about what was happening when I did why is uh, Hadera 32 cent, <laughs> good old days, and, uh, and, and why is Ethereum $4,000. Um, and, and, and in that, I explained that the more and more that people come into the space and the more the space matures, that, that, that people learn that Ethereum doesn't really work as it's supposed to uh, because it's too expensive and it doesn't scale and it's slow and so on and so forth. And when people discover that, they look around for a solution and then they jump onto the likes of Hadera Hashgraph or XDC or, or something similar. And basically, this kind of confirms that. And it basically says there's a technology trigger. So up the, uh, the y-axis is expectations and the, the x-axis, which is the bottom, is time. So you've got expectations and time, okay? So in the very beginning, you have no expectations and it's the very beginning of time, and you have a technology trigger. So something happening happens in the technology space, and in, in this example, it would probably be DigiCash or more likely Genesis Block One Bitcoin from Satoshi. 
So this is kind of 2008, 2009, and Bitcoin has just been invented. And that's the technology trigger. So we've made a massive leap forward because you have slow little incremental progress and then boom, a big jump forward. Slow progress, boom. And we've had a big jump forward in, in the digital uh, revolution. And before that, obviously, it was the industrial revolution and so on. So we've got the technology trigger, Bitcoin. And then everyone says, whoa, Bitcoin's going to save the world. It's going to be the new cash. Uh, we're not going to have all the bankers and a few little people, a few people with lo a small amount of people with loads of power. And it's going to be this utopian, wonderful new world. And it's going to happen in minutes. And that's this slope here. So you can see in a very short amount of time, Bitcoin is discovered, very short amount of time, expectations woof, straight up through the roof. So people have big, big expectations of this new technology. Okay. Then what happens? We hit the peak of inflated expectations. So the expectations are inflated because they're not backed by anything. They're not really sure of the tech. But if you look back, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, people are going, Bitcoin's going to do this. Bitcoin's going to do that. Uh, we're going to be accepting it everywhere. It's going to be the future and so on and so forth. And the price usually follows this uh, chart pretty, pretty, pretty closely too. So we're right up here and we're at the peak of inflated expectations. And then what happens? Then we turn up to the gig, as I say in my other video, uh, link below, and we realize it's a fire festival. Bitcoin actually isn't going to be the money, uh, the new money of the world. Even the biggest Bitcoin maxis have now not admitted that, but they've gone quiet. They just don't mention it anymore. Bitcoin is not going to be the new currency. It's not going to be the new money. Uh, it's not going to be accepted in shops worldwide. It's 11 years old. If it was going to happen, it would have happened. What are we all waiting for? It's not going to happen. And we kind of realized that. So, you know, these new, these new technologies are not going to be built on the Bitcoin platform. Uh, Bitcoin is an exchange of value, nothing more, nothing less. Wumpf, and it drops off a cliff. And then we are in this, this sort of trough. And I would argue that we entered this trough probably a couple of years ago, maybe 2019, 2018, 2019, somewhere around here. And then we have what we're about, I believe we're about to enter, which is the slope of enlightenment. And I truly, truly believe that we are at sort of like day one, week one of the slope of enlightenment. And that is people realizing that actually we've got Hedera Hashgraph, you know, we've got uh, other, other we've got Quant, we've got other platforms, XDC, uh, uh, um, Solana to a, to a degree. Um, we've got these platforms that actually can facilitate exactly what we thought would happen back here. We do have currencies like Ripple that could be the new currency of the world. We do have Hedera Hashgraph, which you can actually build platforms on, you know, layer twos, layer threes, and you can build them on. You can track the NHS uh, vaccine uh, on, on the Hedera Hashgraph. Wow. So we have the slope of enlightenment. And that is we've come through this awful trough of disillusionment, which is where we were. And we're now coming on to the slope of enlightenment. And this is where corporations, big business, start sort of adopting the technology, you know, starting big, big people coming into the space, crypto.com and all those kind of guys. Nike have started saying, right, we're going to be doing NFTs. I'm sort of smashing into the place. McDonald's, bang, they're coming in and all the big boys are coming in and they're realizing actually the technology is undeniable, you know, because a lot, this happens a lot, by the way, this happens all the time. So we have 3D printers, wow, woof, 3D printers. We're, they're going to print food. They're going to, this is going to be amazing. Um, you're going to order a McDonald's and they're going to send a code to your printer. It's going to print food and you won't have to go out again. And we did this and then it falls off a thing and actually they fall away. And yes, 3D printers have found little niches that people use them for, but, but mass adoption that was discussed around here hasn't happened and we've never left the trough of disillusionment. It just never survived. It never got through because what we hoped it would be, it hasn't become. So that's fallen away here. Same thing happened with Zegways in a small way. Do you remember those, the little sort of Zegways? Um, so, so people uh, were like, oh, these, everyone's going to be riding around on these. They're the future. You know, there's not going to be cars anymore. There's not going to be push bikes anymore. It's not going to be, everyone's going to be on Zegways, different forms of Zegways, two-seater Zegways, four-seater Zegways, standing on the Zegway, going to work. And, and this is what was going to happen. And then it never happened. And it just sort of, you know, a few sort of cases have come out, but nothing, nothing massive. Crypto, I can, I can confidently say, has come out of the trough of disillusionment and actually real world use cases are being built on the technology. So we're now creeping up the slope of enlightenment and this will continue to go from strength to strength. And as we get up there, it will plateau and we'll be on the plateau of productivity. And this will just be the internet. So for example, 
the internet is going to do this and it's going to do that and there was loads and loads and loads of big claims then we had the dot, dot com crash it all come crashing down but the technology was undeniable with the internet with the world wide web and it was about here that people said oh i told you so it's just a fad there isn't going to be a computer in every home you know it was just a flash in the pan no one's uh, going to want to uh, everyone's going to want a physical book and a physical, ma physical magazine forever nobody's going to want to read a book on a screen and all the naysayers they all were here and it, like with cryptographic technology, the internet, they were wrong. I think they're going to be wrong this time too. And we're going to come out of this the other side. And then we're going to plateau and it's going to just be productivity all along. And it's just going to be a given. The internet is a given. It's always been great. It will always be great. And it's just a given. And we just keep building cool stuff with it and on it. And that's exactly what I think is going to happen with cryptographic technology. And so say uh, the Gartner. So it's just a really, really nice chart. I think if this is the kind of information that these guys are putting out, uh, this succinct, this clear and easy to understand, no wonder these guys are worth uh, 40, uh, sorry, 4 billion. And hopefully, who knows, if I keep putting out the same level and sort of information, maybe who knows, one day this channel will be worth 4 billion. Fingers crossed. I hope uh, this has been a great distraction for you, if only for a few minutes, and you haven't been thinking about the dustbin fire that is the crypto prices at the moment. When I woke up this morning and had a look at the charts, it was like that scene in The Day After Tomorrow. You know where he realizes that they're in the eye of the storm? He looks around and everything's calm, and then he dives into that place and the ice just goes and, and yeah, that was, that was unfortunately my crypto wallet this morning. I hope this has been a great distraction. Hold on in there, it will come back. We are coming out of this at some point and now might be a great opportunity to buy up some more crypto coins that you've always wanted to get into and new projects or top up those coins that you've always wanted to own more of or you believe in. As I have been saying and have always said in videos again and again and again, Something like this, this might not be the one. Maybe we pull out of this quicker than we all think and then we go back up and then we crash again. But either this time this crash will be prolonged or there will be another one. But at some point we're gonna have one of these and it is gonna wash away and wash out all of the nonsense, all of the non-projects. I've talked about it before. If you're going to invest in cryptographic projects, invest in the ones with real use cases and real utility because they're the ones that are more likely to stand the test of time. And I truly believe Hedera Hashgraph is a great one of those, but there are many others. XDC, Ripple if they win the lawsuit, it's, you know, they, I think those guys are going to be going, doing great things. Quant's another one, and there are loads more. So invest in something. Trezos is another great one. Wax, OMI. Those are projects all with real world purpose. Those are the ones that'll stand the test of time. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching as always. It's a pleasure. I'll see you soon.